You are live. Did I post this? Oh, I'm live. What's up, everybody? I'm live. <laughs> hey. What's going on, everybody? I'm just um, retweeting the tweet. Make sure everybody on Twitter knows that we're live right now because um, or did I retweet this already? I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. That's how tired I am today because I got up late last night to order those ungodly expensive iPhones that are ridiculously overpriced just so I can review it for you guys because I am such a good Samaritan. Hold on. We are live. Okay. So today, today's a special day because, well, every day, I always say every day is a special day because, you know, I got to hype this up. But today's another special day because I have the Lenovo Legion Y730. But before I get into that, I got to introduce somebody. You may know him as Ash Taylor. What's up, Ash? Welcome on the show. Is this a show? What's up? Okay. <laughs> The excitement level there. Bravo. Bravo. Come on, one dig What's, into this box. What's okay, we're going to get into the box. i got to say hi to the peeps. What's up, Rodrigo? What's up, Jazzy Bizuzu, Sherzad, Nokia? Where's where's my Discord crew? If you aren't in the hottest Discord in the game, you got to get there right now. It's discord.gg slash mattmoan is be there because you can talk to me any time of the day. I'm like a love service. I'm always there to give you the love you need answer all of your questions we have people from all over the world poland tunisia egypt Uzbekistan. do we have egypt, anybody from Chile, azerbaijan denmark kazakhstan Europe. do we have a kazakhstani in this in, the, in this in this call i want to know if we have a kazakhstani if we have a kazakhstani i think we're going to do something special all right no alfred you're not getting a shout out it's for reed sorry god you know the for names red. these days all right so here it is you guys highly requested this laptop because, you know, Lenovo this year did a really great job with their Legion line. They released the Y530. We've been dying to get our hands on the 730 because it's kind of like the Y530, but with some upgraded internals. Yo. Yeah. Tamara says, how are you? You can't just interrupt me in the middle of a speech there. Well, That's exactly what I'm meant to do. That is rude. Very rude. Well, you're not going to answer Tamara? No, because... Fine. I'm doing great. I hope you're great too. Can I finish the speech about the Y730? Let's do it. So we have some upgraded internals. We have RGB lighting. We have the similar form factor, a more powerful CPU. I'm not sure if this is the model with the 1060 because it doesn't say on the side, but if not, it will be a 1050 Ti. So let's just let's just get into this. I don't want to waste any more time. I don't want to waste your time. It's Friday night. Like, why do you want to be here on a Friday night? I'd rather be at home eating t tacos. All right, so the first thing we have is the power brick. So Lenovo's doing a pretty good job with their power brick. It's not that like wide chunky one you see on most other gaming laptops, so I do like that. This one is a, how many watts is this bad boy? This one is, do, 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 do. Okay, Ash is gonna tell us how many watts it is while uh, I take the rest of the stuff out of the box. I think it's 150 watts. I'm guessing it's 150 watts. We have a quick start guide which tells you how to get things going. This is a 15 inch laptop, but I believe you can get this in a 17 inch version as well. I'm gonna put that to the side because we don't care about that right now. Other part of the power supply. 120. 120 watts. That's pretty good. Usually it's around 130 or 150 for a 1050 Ti. So I'm glad to see Lenovo's doing it with 120. All right, time for the laptop itself. I'm gonna bump the camera. That's a little too close to the camera. All right, get rid of the styrofoam. Oh yeah. I just I just want to say how elegant you are at unboxing stuff. I am the most elegant unboxer. All right, here we go. This beautiful plastic. Oh yeah. Is that a silver top? Okay, so this this is different. This is not plastic. This is metal. So the 730 has more of a premium feel compared to the regular Y530. Do you want to get the Y530 for me? Right. Actually, I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to. Okay. Well, anyways, this has more of a premium feel. This is a metal lid as opposed to the plastic you get on the regular Y530. The bottom is a combination of plastic and metal. So this portion, of course, is your metal part. And then, of course, we have the open back hinge. Think of it like open ear headphones where the fans can breathe through to provide that maximum suck or rather known as better airflow for your laptop so it can produce better results for your thermals. So just in its typical new fashion, it's using the back hinge to store all of its ports. And as you can see here, we have its power connector. We have a USB 3.0 port, your RJ45 jack, another USB 3.0 port, full size HDMI, and a mini display port. On the left hand side, we have a USB type C. I'm not sure if it's Thunderbolt 3. We will find out very shortly. Your audio jack, and on the other side, we have another USB port. I'm guessing this one's probably USB 2.0. Uh, 
camera, maybe not USB 3.0, but again, we'll check it out once we load this bad boy up. Now opening this guy up, wow. Okay, so again, another bump up in terms of premium quality. We have a metal deck, which feels nice and cold to the touch right now, but it does feel a lot nicer than the plastic that's on the Wi-Fi 30. And the Wi-Fi 30 was actually pretty well built for a plastic laptop. Hinge, not bad, it has good stiffness. It's not too loose, it's not too tight. That's what she said. But um, yeah, I mean, so far so good. Let's check screen flex. Aditi says, metal bottom, wouldn't that become hot? So if it was a completely all metal, I'd be kind of concerned. But what they've done is they've made sure the only portion of the metal of this laptop is towards the, the front of the laptop where basically your hard drive, your battery, and your RAM is stored. This portion right here is your GPU and CPU. So, and they've actually kept it all plastic and removed or use some sort of a grill to allow the air to flow through. So it should be okay. But again, just like we always do in my full review, I'm going to test out thermals and give you guys the full review. So what's the cost and how heavy is it? You know what? I actually forgot to look up the cost of this laptop. So if one of you guys in the chat, give me the US price, please don't give me the Canadian price because I will be so depressed because whatever it is in US is going to be like $90,000 more. In terms of weight, again, I do not know. I have to look up the specs. But I'm guessing based on uh, the Matt Mona's up and down hand test, probably about five and a half to six pounds, maybe more towards six since it's using all metal. For everyone else in the rest of the world? That would be six pounds would probably be what? 2.3, 2.4 kilograms, I'm guessing. So do you want to tell everyone what the configuration of this okay, is? Okay, so I don't know the GPU inside of here, but it's either going to be the 1050 Ti or the 1060. Uh, i7 8750H. Processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM. This one has a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, I believe, and a two terabyte hard drive. Two terabytes, people. Most of these gaming laptops are only coming with one, so you got a lot of more space to store all of your awesome games and your pornography. Let's turn this guy on and see exactly how this loads up. Tom, don't worry about being late. I appreciate you being here. You could be late anytime you want. The fact that you're here makes, makes the world of a difference to me because Tom, you're the tech savage, and uh, next time you will pass your driving test. Yes, I let the world know that you didn't pass the first time, but that's okay. I told you too, I failed the first time when I was 16 years old, so we got something in common here. So All DK right. Slater, this is live, so if you have any questions, get them in. Yes, get them in. Okay, touchpad feels decent. I wouldn't say it's my favorite touchpad. Definitely significantly better than last year's Y520. Woo, look at that. Look at that RGB. It's talking to me. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera. Let me get a little angle over here. There you go. Look at that. Look at that gorgeousness. And obviously we're gonna be able to configure that to different zones and obviously change to the colors that we actually want it to. Um, besides that, keys feel good. It feels nice. This is a nice feeling laptop. Okay, I like it. Okay, so find out the specs. Okay, we're gonna do specs right now. I'm just gonna connect to the Wi-Fi so that we can uh, start downloading stuff. I'm gonna actually connect this hard drive right here. So we can start loading the programs. We can do a display test. Actually, I'm very curious to see if they upgraded the display so we compared have to the Wi-Fi 30. So we have for the cheapest config. Okay. Uh, so remember, guys, the Y730 is more of Lenovo's mid-range offerings. This is not a budget laptop. If you want a budget, you got to look at their Y530. So 16 gigabytes. In terms of GPU, let's load up the GeForce Experience here. Another awesome thing I like about the Wi-Fi 530 is you can do this with the display. You can completely put it down in 180 degrees so you have a flat surface. I don't know what you're going to do with this, but you can do it, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so screen's okay, a little dark. Okay, so basic questions. Yes. Camilla asks the keyboard, or she says the keyboard looks like the one in a GF63. Uh, mm, no. Juan says, what's the hertz of the screen? Hertz of the screen, I believe, is 60 hertz, but or 144 hertz, sorry. So let's let's find that out right now. I'm going and to then ask screen brightness, which we will get to. Yeah, we're gonna test that out once we do a color accuracy test. We're gonna see if this is an improved panel over the Y530. Okay, so we're logging in. Now you all know my Facebook information. Did you tell people the size of the hard drives and what speed it is? I did. It's a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD and a two terabyte for the D drive. So 54, 7200. That's a good question. I don't know yet, but it really doesn't make a difference. It's being used to store stuff. Okay, so we have a 60 hertz display, which is kind of disappointing. I was really hoping for 144 hertz on this bad boy. It's kind of disappointing. Lenovo, 
144 hertz would have been nice. But then again, if you're doing 144 hertz, then you kind of got to put a 1060 in this because in this laptop right here, we have a 1050 Ti. So really you're getting a premium budget laptop. That's what you're getting essentially because you have that 1050 Ti. And you know what, Lenovo's playing it safe and I got to give them credit for doing that because you know what, in the state that we're in with laptops overheating so easily, you drop a few frames, you have a cooler laptop, you have a long, you'll be able to use this laptop for three or four years in terms of it blowing up on you because it gets too hot. The consumer wins in terms of longevity. The old philosopher says, eyeballing it, what do you think of the screen and the, the, you know, the look and the colors? Okay, so the screen. How does it look to you? And you know, also mention the bezels with people asking about the bezels. Right now I'm trying to figure out how to turn the brightness up here because it's not going up. You want to use the function key and the space bar. Yeah, I'll use the, the Windows version. So the bezels I like, they're not too thick except for the bottom portion where they where Lenovo stick the webcam, which is not the great. So this is going to be a nose cam. I'll give you guys an example of what that looks like right now. So the nose cam will kind of stare at you. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's going to be a nose cam. It's hard to see, but it's another potato camera, just like every other typical gaming laptop. Let's start installing applications right now. We're going to do a test. And you know what? I better plug it in because sometimes... Sometimes uh, it purposely dims the display too much that you can't actually get it to its full brightness. So let's do that first. Uh, Rai asks, are you going to review the Acer Helios 500 AMD version? I plan to. I'm still trying to get one. They should have some units in soon. Once they have units in, I will review it just for you, Ryan. I'll put your name in the title. I'll say AMD Helios 500 Ryan Edition. So for those that care, the logo on the front is also RGB. Is it really? Yes, it is. Awesome. See, so on the Y530, it's only white. On this bad boy, RGB galore. So if you're into RGB, kind of like, okay, the display is absolutely bright now. Okay, so let's install the display test. We'll do the display test first because I'm super curious about this display. Wow, that kicked up a lot. Oh yeah, it kicked up tons. I want to know how bright the color accuracy, but it looks pretty good. I'm guessing maybe 98%, but I could be wrong. What's that noise? Whoa, what's that? You guys hear this? No, it's gone. It's gone. Never mind. False alarm. We thought we had some sort of like little, I thought there was a bomb in this computer for a second. So, um, where is it gone? Okay, so. Juan, sorry for mispronouncing your name. He says, sounds like nothing can beat the Helios 300. 144 hertz, 1060 for the price. Helios 300 is, is good. What do you say, the Helios 300? Yeah. Yeah, though he's, Helios 300 and Omen 15 are pretty good for the price. Where's the, am I blind? Spider folk, here it is. Yeah, those are both great for the price. The, uh, the HP Omen 15 has the advantage with that USB Type-C port, but um, usually you'll find a better price tag on the Helios 300. But again, you gotta pay at least 1150 for for those laptops. <clears throat> All right. Let's uh, Michael asks, does it have Intel Optane? This one does not. If So here's the thing. Intel Optane is only useful if you, you have like a, a regular hard drive in here and you have a space to plug in Intel Optane. But if you have an SSD as your main drive, you don't need Intel Optane. You're going to get better speeds with that SSD drive since you have more space to load up bigger files. So um, do you think it's important that this has an anti-glare screen? Not really. I mean, like we get when you game, you're not gaming in the sunlight. Like you're gaming at home in a basement in a dark room. You're gaming away from a window. Unless you like, get, I don't know. That's where most people game these days. You telling me you don't game out in the middle of the desert? I like to game. Uh, well, it could be the next thing. It could be the next big thing. Okay, so we got this installed. Let's load this up. So uh, Shazod says, if it's a 1050 Ti, then wouldn't the XPS 15 be a better choice? The XPS 15 is a totally different beast of a laptop. And no, it depends. The XPS 15 would only be a better choice if you want something portable. This guy, at least based on my theory, is, is gonna have, it's gonna run a lot better in the sense that the cooling is gonna be better. This is a thicker laptop, therefore it should provide better heat management. So when, you know, let's say you're rendering something or you're doing something that is, um, requires a, a big load, this is going to give you better boosts over the long run compared to a, an XPS 15 that's going to throttle a lot more. Okay, and to be honest, it's not that bad. I mean, like six pounds, there's a little bit of screen wobble, but it's not terrible. Keyboard flex is not too bad. 
So our shattered legacy says, even if this doesn't have a 1060, at least you could use an eGPU. If yeah. it has Thunderbolt 3, which we should probably look into right now. Everyone says it has Thunderbolt 3. It does? 3. Okay, so then yeah, if that's proving the case. Proving you wrong as usual. I didn't, I didn't say I was right, so no one's proving me wrong, Ash. Aren't you the tech reviewer, though? I am the tech reviewer, but I haven't opened this up yet. People? I hate you all. I quit. Um, Lover of tech says hi. Hello, Mr. Lava Lava. He's from the UK, just like you, Ash. Jonathan Garcia says, can you stream with this? Yeah, I mean, it's using an i7-8750H. So you got those six cores. Those will help with streaming. The 1050i is not that powerful for gaming in general, so probably not the best GPU I choose for streaming and playing games. But yeah, you can totally stream with this. Uh, Dallas King says, are the heat sinks also RGB? <laughs> that would be uh, pretty crazy. I mean, you never see it unless you're somehow, I don't know, have your laptop situated in the air. But no, they're not RGB. Uh, We're going to open it up. Do you guys want to open up this laptop later or not? Let us know. Sorry, Dallas. I'm fired. No GTX 1060 option. Lover of tech. There's I, there's Can supposed to be a GTX 1060 option from what I remember talking to the rep. So check their website. There should be. Because uh, 1050 Ti is... I mean, you're just paying for a more premium Wi-Fi 530 at this point. Can you uh, bring the charger into view? Can you show people what the charger looks like? Charger is like this. Pretty much, it's a little bit thicker than the charger from the HP Pavilion gaming laptop, but it's not nearly as wide as, let's say, the charger on the Acer Predator Helios 300, or the, o not the Open 15, or the, what's the other laptop, or the Dell G7, or the Dell G3. Grad, uh, Christy says, Lenovo always had bad brightness, so I always stayed away from their screens, so... He wants to know, when you obviously do this, uh, how bright the screen yeah. is. Yeah, so first we're going to do color accuracy. I'm going to tell you if this panel is better than the one that's on the Y530. Then the next step is to do a display analysis, and we're going to check out how many nits of brightness this display can get to. As long as it gets to 300, Ash is fine with 250, but as long as it gets to 250 or 300, we're good. Uh, a lot of people are liking the Helios 300, thinking it's the best all-around laptop. Um, Ghost of Sparta asks, what is the best GTX 1070 laptop? Oh, man, good question. Okay, so, again, um, in terms of what? Something that's more portable or something that's thick? If it's thick, based on my testing that I've tested recently, um, the Helios 500 is a great example. Um, I'd stay away from the Alienware laptops. They've done nothing but overheat. So I wouldn't buy this year's batch of Alienware laptops. Um, I have the Razer Blade in the other room. It runs okay. It does power throttle a lot, but thermals are not too bad. It just power throttles a lot, which really reduces the CPU performance, but you got good GPU performance. Asus Zephyrus M, great laptop. That's what I'd recommend if you want to go a little bit more premium, something thinner. So Helios 500 and Asus Zephyrus M would be my two that I'd say go for. Jortis asks, can you slot Optane on any M.2 slot? Only if the, the motherboard and the BIOS supports it which most new laptops it does. Dawid asks, what kind of laptop for graphics with good color reproduction? So you're gonna look at more like, um, more, more prosumer laptops. So stuff like um, the Dell XPS 15, the Dell XPS 2-in-1, um, the Surface Book 2. Your Asus uh, one did really well. Yes, right? the Asus ZenBook Pro is not bad either. The Razer Blade? Razer? The 4K version? The 4K version, of the, you know what? I wouldn't buy the 4K version for content creation. I'd buy it for gaming first, content creation second. But purely on color reproduction. Oh, color reproduction is fantastic, the 4K version of the Razer Blade. But you will have to calibrate it out of the box, even though they say they do it at their factory. You still have to calibrate it yourself. Okay, so just for, uh, as we go through this, people want to know the temperatures, ideal, et okay. cetera, and also this Thunderbolt business and how many lanes there are. Okay, so if it does have Thunderbolt 3, I guarantee it's going to have four PCIe lanes. Um, so with that being said, I will confirm it with you guys in, let's say, on my Discord server, or maybe on Instagram, or in, for sure in my full review. So unless someone wants to go on to their website and check for me right now. Well, you can find out yourself. That's why you have this. That's the whole point of the stream, my friend. But we can save time if... Actually, I think there is RGB inside. Oh my god, that's so cool. Okay. Okay, I can't show it to you right now because it's doing its, it's thing. It's just the, the bleed from the keyboard. Are you sure? No, it's this is orange. I think the fans inside have its own RGB coloring. I'll show it to you guys afterwards. This Even the back, you guys can kind of see here. Look at that. 
Huh? So Perth asks, does this have uh, Windows Precision drivers? I haven't checked yet, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure it has Windows Precision drivers. That's all you need, people. 99.9%. What, what was the last hot... Oh, which one was it? The HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop. That, I was shocked. That one didn't have Windows Precision drivers. That had ELAN drivers. I was like, what? So people definitely want you to open this up okay. after you've do uh, done your stuff. Um, We're going to do an open up test. Uh, Mr. O. Bilo Du, this is, uh, is this a 15 or 17 inch version laptop, Matt? This is the 15 inch version, but apparently you can get in the 17 version. Our Shattered Legacies says it's actually RGB. So, sorry, Ash, you're wrong this time. What's RGB? The fans, it has its own RGB apparently. Cool. So if you're into RGB, this laptop is RGB'd out for you, okay? Um, what else do you guys need to know about this thing? It, as of right now, based on my first impressions, it's pretty much a Y530 that's been pretty much given a nice cosmetic lift. So nice metal keyboard, beautiful RGB. The rest we're gonna find out if there's improvements as well, like the like the display. We're gonna find out about in two seconds. Here we go. You ready? There you go. Aman proves my point. What's his point? He says it won't take you more than two minutes to check if it's for PCI lens. Just do it already. No. <laughs> there you go. I'm joking. I'll do it. Okay. Here we go. So this is, I don't know if you guys can see this. Again, I always do this, but you guys can never notice the difference. So this is the calibrated view. This is the uncalibrated view. And you're not gonna be able to tell. Oh, you can tell a little bit. So you can see it gets a little bit cooler when it's uncalibrated, and then it becomes a little bit warmer when it's calib Just calibrated. Get the numbers, my friend. All right, the numbers. Whoa, okay. I got some good news, guys. This display is significantly better than the one that's on the Lenovo Y530. This one has 98% sRGB and 75% Adobe RGB. So I'd be confident enough to do color correction on this or edit a video on this without having to worry about a terrible screen. So if you've wanted the Y530 but you didn't want to buy it because it had a bad screen, the Y730 is going to have a much better screen. Mr. Flop asks, what color profile is best for gaming, Adobe RGB or sRGB? I would just go with sRGB because that's what everyone sees, right? Adobe RGB is... Uh, it's more not, for photos yes. or like prints and stuff, right? Okay, display analysis. Let's do this. Let's find out. Oh, how how's bright the keyboard? Thing... Sorry? How's the keyboard? Keyboard's great. Um, I don't, hold me, I'll tell you in a second. I don't want to screw this up, but so far it's pretty comfortable. Hold on. I just want to begin this test first. So let's take some bets. What do you guys think of how many nits of brightness this, this monitor gets up to. I'm saying, based on my first impressions, I say 250 nits of brightness. That's my guess. I mean, you guys can't really tell because you're in the chat, but it never hurts to guess. Any, uh, can you tell us any specs for the screen? Is it IPS? Yes, the, sc the screen it? is IPS at 60 hertz, and it has uh, pretty good color accuracy. Okay, now I gotta figure out why this is not. No, hold on, guys. We're having some technical di difficulties over here with the, with the brightness on the. Oh shit! Hold on a second. Did you just swear? Oh, I swore all right. Out of anger because of this. Okay, we have two fifty, three hundred, two ninety, three hundred, three hundred, two fifty, four twenty, four hundred, two seventy five, no. five hundred. If you say five hundred, you're crazy. Three hundred sixty nine. Sixty nine. That's a nice one. That's a good one. All right, we're having technical difficulties here, people. That's for the keyboard, okay. Does it have a fingerprint scanner? Control, no, it's not it. Uh, no fingerprint scanner. Can you not just adjust it in the settings already? Well, that's what I'm trying to do, hold on. Cancel. So right now I'm having issues with the brightness. So usually on most Lenovo laptops, to increase the brightness on the display, you hit the function key plus the little button on the space bar. But for some reason, this one is not doing it. Oh wait, what's this? Nope. Oh, there we go. Never mind. I found it out. <laughs> okay. The uh, tech reviewer, everyone. The tech reviewer. Okay, I gotta redo it again, guys. I apologize. Please forgive me. Find it in your hearts to forgive me. So back to that keyboard question for all those people okay. asking. I like it. Travel distance, based on the Matt Mona's touch test. Say about 1.5 millimeters, which is like the lowest I'm willing to go on a gaming laptop. But it's nice, like it's a little bit mushy, but not too mushy. 
And there's a little bit of feedback. So I mean, if you're gaming, you're going to feel the keys nicely. So overall, good stuff. OK, a couple of quick fire questions. Is this a final product or an engineering sample? This is a final product. Does it have Windows Hello? No. Uh, what's the bloatware like? We'll check in a second. Hold on. Let's get this going Stand by. Uh, when will this be available in Europe? That you'll have to confirm with your own European peoples. Because I have no idea. <laughs> Can you take this into a meeting without looking stupid? Um, I think with the Y530, it's a little bit more conspicuous just because it's black and it looks cleaner. This one stands out a little bit more, but I think you can totally take this into a meeting. I don't think it's that bad. Just turn off the RGB and you'll be fine. So everyone, um, mainly Tom, says you suck with Windows. And then <laughs> Yosef follows up with saying, are you a Mac user? No, I do not use Macs. Not because I hate them or I think they're bad products. It's just they don't fit in my workflow. Like I game, I don't, I game and I use Adobe Premiere and it just works a lot better on Windows. So first name says function and spacebar turns the keyboard light on. Yeah, I figured it out. Thanks. You're the hard way. So terrible. I think I should just leave now. You should just leave. I can't tell if I'm on the next thing yet because it's so dark. You're going to ask thoughts on the uh, Asus Strix Scar 2 1070 version. I've heard good things about it. I haven't tested it myself. I'm trying to get my hands on it. This is Canada people. We get like one review unit every 10 years. So as soon as I get one in, I promise to review it. Uh, Z Z M Z M A H D says, Matt, can you please shave the head? No. Nobody Z likes Z-Mad wants haircut. me to dance. He wants me to shave my head. He wants me to move to the North Pole. He wants me to do a bunch of things. Uh, he just wants misery for me. Niran Jan, we have gone through the ports. Uh, Matt can give you a quick recap. If you want the ports at this point, um, again, they'll be on the website. I already kind of listed them, but you have USB Type-C on the left. USB 3.0 on the right side. You have HDMI, a couple more USB ports. You yeah. have this is a mini display port. Mini display port, it's audio nice. jack, the standard stuff. Zool Shift uh, has said this thing too many times now. He says the 1050 is too old. A new NVIDIA GPU is coming soon. Question mark. So question don't mark, get question too mark, question mark question mark. Don't don't get too hyped up about the RTX GPUs right now. Like if you're considering buying a laptop, I wouldn't be like, oh my god, I'm gonna wait for the RTX. Lineup. The, the performance difference will be noticeable. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Are you guys ready? 315 nits or 314 nits of brightness. Not bad at all. That's over the category average of 300. I like it. I like it, people. It's really good. That's really good. Better than the Helios 300, better than most of the gaming laptops I've been reviewing lately that are in the mid-range to budget category. Uh, as if the okay. starting price, 1279 USD, was what was pasted in the chat. That is correct. Uh, Assassin Toilet asks, uh, XPS 15 or Zephyrus M or S? Okay, so you're going from content creator gamer second to gamer first content creator second. So um, for me personally, I would still choose the XPS 15 only because it's lighter, it's more portable, and... I can take it a lot easier. But if you don't move around a lot, you might find the Zephyrus to be a better option just because you can game on it. Screen flex. Test. Do it. I already did it, but I'll do it again. There's a little bit. It's a little wobbly. It's not the best, but it wobbles. All right, so we did the display test. Display is excellent, minus the 60 hertz. I would have loved to have 144. Keyboard is fantastic. You can change the RGB. Actually, before I open it up, I think we should do a sound test. What do you guys think? People sound want, test people first? People want a sound test and idle temperatures. Okay. So let's do idle temperatures first. I didn't bring my floor monitor, so we'll use this one. So we'll do surface temperatures first. So the keyboard right now, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but. Just tell people. Okay, so it's 32 degrees Celsius on idle. I mean, this is a pointless test to be honest with you because most laptops are gonna be fine when it's doing nothing. So 32 degrees Celsius is fine around the keyboard area. And what about the sound? Sound, let's do a sound test. So for sound, we have. No, I mean. Oh, okay, so just to let you guys know, beside me I have another computer here, I have two Atmos Shoguns, so there is some noise, so it's not going to be very accurate, so whatever it is, add five decibels, like reduce, like reduce it five by decibels. five decibels. Okay, so for sound, I'll put on this side. Okay, so we have 36 decibels, but honestly, with the fan noise beside me, I'd probably say it's around 32 to 33 decibels, 
when it's on idle. We'll do a ramped up test in a little bit later. Now let's do an actual sound test from the speakers itself, and then we'll jump into opening up this laptop. Uh, I just had a question from Jortis. Are you using the 1080p version? That's correct, this is the 1080p version. This one or the Dell G7 from Andre? Oh man, I personally would rather have this than the Dell G7, even though it has a weaker GPU, just because it has all the other things that I want, like a color accurate display, a better finish, probably better thermals, and um, we're gonna test out the sound right now to see if that's better too. Okay, I'm picking any random song. Let's do some machine, actually do some machine gun Kelly here. Okay, so um, the highs are pretty good. I did find it to distort in max volume. Did you hear some distortion? Uh, a little a bit. A little. On the bass, like the low end. That it. could be also the mixing of the song too. Yeah. Um, we have to play some more songs. It's okay. I think it sounded good. Yeah. Better than what you had last week. Last week was the Pavilion, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, last week, yeah, you're right, it was Pavilion. Better than the Pavilion gaming laptop, but again, that's a budget. This is mid-range. So sounds good. Little just little distortion at the low end, but like Ash said, it could be the song itself. All right, are you guys ready to open this up or what? Let's do it. Cool, I'm just making my way through the questions. Yeah, Abdullah, we did fan noise. Uh, 144 hertz is available last time Jordis checked. The Gel Dell G7 has an SD card slot, which this does not. That's, that's correct, there's an extra slot there. But again, the Dell G7 is a bigger laptop. That's something bigger you're gonna have to carry around with you, right? So Important note, Dallas King has uh, corrected the price. Uh, for the 15 inches, 12.09. It okay. starts from 17 inches, where 12.79 is. Gotcha, so 12.09 for this, probably this build right here or starting price for this type of laptop. All right, let's open it up. Asan Karbul says, yeah, open it up. And if Asan says open it up, we're gonna open it up. Uh, so whilst you're doing that, Yossi asks, hey Matt, how is the keyboard compared to the Y530? Oh man, I'm trying to remember how the Y530 was. What do you have in the other room? Sorry? It's the Y530 is in the other room. We'll go get it. Okay, all right, Ash is gonna tell you a story while I go get it. Uh, sure. Oh, that was quick. I was just about to tell you a story, but here he is. Uh, never mind. Maybe next time. All right, I'm back. I'm sure the story was great. I yeah, hope it, it was, was entertaining. Uh, it was an epic. Trilogy. All right, so we got the Wi Fi. Okay, okay, okay. Here's the difference. All right, so here's the Wi Fi 30 here. So that's interesting. I don't know if this one's fine tuned by Arm Harman Kardon like the Wi Fi 30 is, but here's the big takeaway from this. So on the Wi Fi 30, the touchpad is centered to the left. Whereas on the Y730, you have more proportional touchpad that's directly in the middle, so a lot more comfortable to use. In terms of keyboard, the Y530 def... Oh, why are you shutting off, computer? The Y530 definitely feels like it has more travel distance, only because the keys themselves have that rubber texture to it. So if you've used the Predator Helios 300, you'll be very familiar with the Y530. The keys on this are obviously plastic too, but they don't have that rubber feel to it. They feel more premium. This, this one actually feels like a gaming keyboard. This one is kind of like balanced in the middle. Uh, besides that, the next thing to take away from this is, again, you have this like rubber plastic deck compared to the metal one on this device right here. So that's the big difference. But in terms of size, they're pretty much equal. Like, let me put this on top here. I'm gonna open it up anyways. You can see the size difference. They're pretty much the exact same size. Same port lineup, actually no, hold on. Same port lineup, but this guy is kind of just in reverse. And as you can see here, you have the same ports on the left hand side. And then you have the same ports on the other side. 
So that's the you know pretty much the same style of laptop. One's made out of metal, the other one's not. All right, let's open it up. Okay, so it's just making my way through those the rest of those questions. Um, Abdullah asks, does this have Dolby sound and is it high res? Does it have Dolby sound? It has Dolby Atmos speaker system, so it does have high res audio. Probably best way to take advantage of it is to actually place your headphones connected to the computer so that you'll get better sound as opposed to using it. I'm not sure if, I know Lenovo's pushing Alexa on a lot of their computers. I don't, know, I don't know if this one has Alexa integration as well, but it might. Uh, Zero Boss asks, is there a big difference between the i5 8600A and the i7 8700? Oh, you're talking about desktop PCs now. Um, yeah, so. so I mean for gaming, if you're just gaming, I would just get the i5. Like, don't even bother getting the i7. You're not gonna notice that much of a performance increase. But if you plan on doing um, 3D Studio, content creation, maybe maybe you're doing a lot of compiling a lot of code, that's when you wanna go for the i7 over the i5. So people do want, when we tend to think back on, stressed thermals and stressed uh, noise levels. Okay. Um, next question from Adish. Adish in the house. Uh, won't dust enter through the grill? Yeah, most likely, but you'll have to just keep it clean. I mean, like, I'd rather have a grill that's open with a little bit of dust getting in and keep the keep the heat from letting it go out at least than rather have a closed system without no dust getting in and just being just being a little bit too hot. Uh, Red Skull says he finally Red made Skull. it to the live stream. What's going on, buddy? Alex is in the house. He's another Canadian, does awesome tech videos. Guru Murphy asks, uh, Thunderbolt 3, a must-have, question mark. Uh, that's the thing, I don't think it's a must-have. I think it's only a must-have on laptops that like are portable, like Ultrabooks. Like, sometimes people just don't wanna carry a big clunker around with them, but yet they want the power when they're back in their studio, maybe in their office. That's what I'd want Thunderbolt 3. But you have to make sure the cooling is sufficient for it because a lot of the Ultrabooks out there don't have the best cooling. So I don't think it's a must. I just think it's a convenience for those of you that want an external GPU. Uh, Andre Simeon uh, left you well. a really nice comment. He said, you're the best. I love your videos and content. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. It's all that means me. a lot to me. Uh, Jota says, battery size. Oh, that's a good question. Well, we're going to find that out once we open it up. We're going to answer all of those questions once this beautiful laptop gets pried open. Chris says, 1,200 for GTX 1050 Ti is not worth it. Yeah, you know what? Some of you, okay, so here's the thing. You're not, you're, you guys are basing it on the GPU. The difference between this and let's say the ones that actually have a 1060 is that this is more of a premium feel. Like you're paying for the metal, you're paying for the slim design, you're paying for the, the better display. You're paying for the little things. So if that's important to you, then it might be worth it. But if you're just basing it on GPU, then yeah, there's, there's better value out of products like the Helios 300 from Acer or even the Omen 15. Uh, Zinki says, dude, buy the Xiaomi Mi gaming laptop next. Minimalistic gaming laptop at its finest. They just released the 8th gen variants a few weeks ago. I know, I saw, I'm trying to get my hands on one, but um, it's tough. It's tough unless I buy it. And I've been buying a lot of things, especially last night to buy freaking iPhones. People still really want you to dance. I'm just seeing so I just comments. danced already. I danced when the music was playing. What more do they want for my life? Uh, shaving your head, apparently. What's going on here? I'm gonna strip oh. this. This one's stuck. Let's make my way back. I'm trying to find the other flathead over here. It's mixed up somewhere. Where are you? Aha, here it is. I think this is David it. David says, could you, uh, on the final there review, test the battery life under a workload for the day? Assuming a college student takes it to class, runs a few programs on it, how, lo how long would it David, last? how about you take me to your college? How about that? I'll come to you with your college and I will do your homework for you and I'll give you a realistic view of this laptop. I think that would be the best test. Nobody ever wants that. <laughs> They'd be like, why is your dad coming to class with you? Can you get your dad out of Jota here? Jota says the Y720 had JBL tuned speakers, so this should have it, but he doesn't know. This one has Dolby Atmos speaker system. That's all it says on this. Okay, one more screw. The Sad Potato says, is this worth it just for the screen? The Wi-Fi 30 seems decent, but if this gets bright, but if it gets that bright and is that color accurate, it might be worth the extra money. I do not really care about RGB. Yeah, so I definitely think if you want to, if you want to like be able to game and do content creation second or some sort of color accuracy second, I think it's totally worth it over the Y530 for those for that reason alone. Uh, Skander asks, uh, well, he says he thinks the build quality is better and the Y530. Would you agree? Or no, disagree? definitely not. This build quality in this guy is better. 
So definitely he's saying better. you're completely wrong, by the way. Pretty much. So, who says I'm going to break this? Oh, one more screw. I almost broke this. I almost started to rip it off without taking the last one off. Uh, Exodox A11 says, when will the new Dell XPS review go live? I don't know if I'm going to review it, guys. I mean, I have it here in the studio, but like it's been reviewed so many times by so many other people that I got it so late that I don't even know if people are going to watch the video at this point. I mean, I know a couple of you guys will, but you know, it takes a lot of time and effort to make a production out of it. So what I might do instead of doing like a whole fancy review like I usually do is just sum it up on my, my opinion, like a quick two minute video of what I think about it. So when you're doing that, uh, okay. Jortis has asked for you to point out where the speakers are. So just remember to do Okay, that. so speakers are right here. So they're, 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 face, they're, they're down firing speakers so they don't face towards you. So you will have a little bit of tinniness as you heard when I played the, the, the example. Right over here, you have a 2.5 inch hard drive, which is swappable. So if you don't like the size, you want an SSD instead, you can swap it out, put a regular SSD in there instead of using the regular HD. Over here, we have your M2, M, is this an MVME? I'm gonna take this heating pad off for a second. Actually, I don't know if I should. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna take the thing off, but I'm pretty sure it's MVME. This is a Skyx, doesn't say. Okay, I'll have to test it out in my in my when I do my hard drive test. But it's either a regular SSD or an M2 NVMe SSD. Inside of here's the battery. The battery itself is 4820 milliamps, so it's exactly 57 watt hours. So I believe, I believe the Y530 is 52 watt hours. So because we have that brighter display, the battery size is a little bit bigger. Therefore, it should provide equal or slightly better battery life than the Y530. So over here we have your CPU and GPU with a two heat pipe system, your fans on both the left and right hand side. The, the, I mean, this is pretty practical or pretty standard for most gaming laptops, especially in terms of size. You have a swappable Wi-Fi card. So if you don't like this one for whatever reason, you can go ahead and swap it out. And under here is gonna be the RAM. I just don't wanna break this when I take it out. But The RAM is not soldered onto the motherboard, so you will be able to replace it. So whilst you're doing that, um, the sad potato is in quite a pickle. He can't really decide between the Y530 or the Y730. What there would you, you say? RAM. Okay, so hold on one second. Just, let me go over the RAM quickly. So we have two slots for RAM. We have one 16 gigabyte SIM in this one. So if you buy this model, you can go ahead, go out there and plop in another 16 gigabyte stick and you can go ahead and use 32 gigabytes of RAM. So sad potato, you can't decide between this and the Y530, eh? Well, what do you do? What do you do in life? Are you a content creator? Are you an engineer? Are you a programmer? Are you someone who just likes to game? If you're someone who just likes to game, I would honestly just go for the Y530 because at the end of the day, it's the same performance. The i5 is more than good enough. And even though the screen is not as bright as this one, the contrast ratios are pretty good and you're gonna have a good experience. If you want, if you love this laptop and you wanna do content creation as well, then I would get the Y730 instead because of that color accurate display, the brighter display, which means you're more likely to bring it to school and do some work there. So that's it. Any more questions before I put the lid back on this device? Any more questions about the internals of this laptop before I put the lid back on? You got 10 seconds. Well, you got more than 10 seconds because this is delayed, but yeah. Game test, game test. I don't have any games installed in this. By the time I install the game, the stream will be over. But I will be doing lots of game tests this weekend on this laptop. As you guys actually think, it's the perfect time to plug it. Every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, I do a stream on Twitch. This weekend happens to be the Blackout Beta White weekend for COD 4. So I'm gonna be playing a Battle Royale all weekend. So if you wanna see me play some Battle Royale on this laptop on Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time, Hop on Twitch and you can, and I'll show you guys the gameplay and I'll show you guys the heat on this laptop. I'll show you exactly how hot it gets after an hour or two of gameplay. All right, so I'm gonna put this back up. The heat, so Zinke asks, what do you think of the heat pipes? I think they're fine. I think this is the pretty standard heat pipes. Each one has their own separate heat pipe and they both share another one. So that's kind of good. I think heat management should be okay. There's not a lot of uh, heat being drawn from the 1050 Ti. So it's gonna be a lot better than a 1060. I think it should be okay. And obviously we're gonna test that. Like I said, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, 
starting a lot today, 9 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday. Join me and we'll do some gameplay and I'll show you guys thermals. All right, I'm gonna throw this thing back on. So whilst you're doing that, I'll give you some more questions. Uh, H asks, following you from France, really good Merci job. Merci beaucoup. Really good job on your videos. One question, do you think this Y730 would be better value for money than the MSI GS63 Stealth? MSI GF63 Stealth. Okay, would it be better value for the money? Yes, 100%. The only reason to buy the MSI GF60 video over any laptop is for its portability. It's 4.5 pounds. That's the only reason you buy it. You don't mind that it has a 1050 Ti Max Q. But between these two laptops, at the end of the day, I'd rather have the Y730. I don't mind that's a little bit bulkier because it's still not that bad. Uh, William says, thanks for the great laptop reviews. Helped me pick my two-day-old Helios 300. You're very welcome. How are you liking the 300? Are you gaming a lot on it? What do you mostly do with it? Uh, S Patel says, what do you think of the cooling compared to the Y530? That's something I have to tell you uh, once I actually test the laptop, but I'm expecting it to be very similar. Next question, hit me up. Uh, do, 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 do. Cool fact, it has heat sinks on both sides of the motherboard, yes. Uh, oop, just jumped. Lost the question. So while I do this, what do you guys think of uh, the new iPhones? How do you feel about those uh, really expensive iPhones? Do any of you guys even use iPhones? I'm just curious. Uh, Vikas asks, which one do you prefer? HP Omo with 1060, 6 gigs of RAM, uh, 6 gigs, 16, oh, 16 gigs of RAM, i7, 8750, or the Y730? What was the question? Which one was the first one? HP Omen with 1060, 6 gigs, uh, 1066 gigs, 16 gigs of RAM, i7, 8750, 144 hertz panel. Yeah. Or this Y730. Okay. That's a doozer. I, okay. Um, if I was not, okay, I'll just make it simple for you. If I had no choice, I'd probably still take the Omen 15 just because it has more power and it's pretty much just a little bit thicker than this and I'd rather have that extra extra power for gaming and content creation. Uh, Dota asks, does this have SIM input? No, it does not have SIM input. I don't I don't know any gaming laptops with SIM input. Uh, Source wants, is any comment on its cooling system or the Wi-Fi card? So the Wi-Fi card, I didn't check the name of it, but I'm pretty sure it's the exact same one that's in the Lenovo Wi-Fi 530. Cooling system is also very similar to the one that's in the Wi-Fi 530, so I'm expecting good results. Because I didn't have any complaints about the Wi-Fi 530. I thought it did a good job. Uh, first names. Assuming he's trying to troll you, he said, can you put some water on it to see if it's waterproof? Ha 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 ha. I will not be doing that because Lenovo will get angry and never provide me with laptops to review for you guys. Is that what you want? Um, so we had a speaker test. Suan, you might just have to wait for this is over and then go back and check it. Yeah, so speakers in short were good highs, got pretty loud. Bass was a little bit muddled, but it could have been the song. Uh, ba -ba. The reason why this is taking me so long is because I'm using a flathead and it doesn't fit properly. It's Sad Potato adds, thank you, Matt Moners. Uh, didn't say my name, so I don't know why. <laughs> Just wanted to point out that for students, Lenovo offers what seems to be a 10% discount. That's not bad. It saves you tax in certain states in the U.S. It doesn't cover all of tax here in Canada, but... It's not a bad deal. Guys, give some Ash some thanks too. No, it's cool. For being on the microphone. Cynic YT says, uh, was it two times eight gigs of RAM or one stick of 16? One stick of 16 gigabytes. There's another slot open if you ever want to upgrade to 32. Uh, Y730 or XPS 15 for content creation? XPS 15, hands down, for content creation first. Are the fans accessible for cleaning? Yeah, I mean, you have to take off the back portion. I think, I honestly think you can take off just this. I don't think you need to take off this to get to the fans. Why don't you tell them? Why don't you show them? Oh, okay, let's see. Let's see if you can just take off this portion. I could be wrong. I might crack the laptop in half and then you guys are all going to laugh at me. But we're going to try anyways. Uh, Tom Tech says, should I change my YouTube name to Tom Tech the Savage? Yes. Own it, Tom. Own it. Okay, I lied. You can't do that. Or maybe you can. Hold on. Is this bulkier than the HP Omen 15? No. Uh, no. I'd still say the Omen 15. Yeah, no, you can't do it. I started ripping the glue. Okay. You have to take off the whole lid. He was lying. Uh, Batukman says, doesn't the Lenovo X1 Extreme and Elysian series overlap? 
No, because the thing, the Lenovo X1 Extreme is their carbon line, and it's the first time they've ever introduced a dedicated graphics card to the ThinkPad series. And to be quite honest with you, it's not a powerful dedicated GPU. It's only a 1050 Ti Max Q. They had to stick something that could be well cooled in there because you have to remember, these ThinkPads are super thin, right? So you can't be sticking a GTX 1060 in there. So this is a, this is a test for them. They want to see if they can give more professionals the power they need if they're on the road. I think it's a great idea. I'm actually looking very forward to reviewing that laptop. Uh, Suan, display and color accuracy has already been given. So again, just go back after this is done and check it out. 98% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB. Or not, you could just listen to it. <laughs> 315 nits of brightness. Uh, Thunderball343 is considering the Asus Zephyrus GM501 and the Razer Blade 15. Which one do you like better for gaming and which do you think has better audio? Audio, the Razer Blade 15 has better audio. For gaming, I still prefer the Zephyrus GM over the Razer Blade. So oh. I, actually, this is a great, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek at one of my next videos. Should I do it or no? What is a sneak peek? Are you gonna play it for them? No, actually, you know what? I'll wait for the video because I have some interesting results I wanna talk about with the Razer Blade 15 and the Dell XPS 15. But, um, yeah, we'll talk about that soon. But definitely better sound on the Razer Blade. iPhone comments are coming in. Uh, nope. Uh, iPhone excessive. Innovation at its finest. I hate iPhones. Uh, Sabotato says the iPhone XR seems all right, but the rest are too expensive. Grad Christie says not worth it, in my opinion. Not when there's so much stuff at 700 or under. Uh, and then other people. Sujith says it's called Predator because all the other laptops are its prey. Aman says, I don't have enough kidneys to sell for the new iPhone. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So to give Daniel you guys... says, phones are getting boring. Yeah, I mean, you know, everything gets boring every once in a while because, you know, they've matured. Just to give you guys an example, I, I ordered two iPhones just so I can review them for you guys. I'm, gonna re I'm re totally returning one. I'm not going to keep them both. But anyways, I, re I ordered two iPhones and an Apple Watch to review. $3,700 Canadian, which is absolutely nuts it's like someone came over to my house punched me in the balls kicked me down the stairs took my cake and left that's exactly how it felt all right okay so we're it's closed up we can load this back up i do like the fact that there's little lights on the back that tell you what's plugged in and what's happening based on what you have going on over here wait those are lit up those light up yeah they're lit up right now i don't know if you guys but can nothing's see nothing's plugged in Oh, I, oh, you know what? They're not there to tell you they're plugged in. Sorry. They're there to guide you. Okay, that's pretty cool, actually. I didn't notice that. Little things. So let's say you have this on your desk, right? And you want to plug in your RJ45 jack. Usually, you'd have to go around and look at the back of the laptop and line it up. But since they have the little lights over here that are kind of glowing right now, you can just go where the light is and plug it exactly in. I kind of like that. And being able to put your cables back here as opposed to the sides leaves a cleaner space on your desktop. So, kind of nice. I'm glad they did that. Jortis asks, what should be the appropriate laptop to compare this against? So anything with a 1050 Ti. So um, you're gonna be looking at the higher end mid ranges with Ti. So the G7, I think you can get that with a Ti. You're gonna be looking at, technically you should be looking at the Helios 300 as well, because it's the same price range. The Omen 15 would also be a good example. Uh oh, this monitor is not turning on. Let's turn this off completely first. I was just going to say for time, you should uh, load up a stress test so we can get thermals. Yeah, we're going to do a quick minor stress test. Do not take this as the holy grail. All right, come on, monitor, load up. Show me some love. Don't tell me I screwed you up already. Okay, we're fine. False alarm, we're good. Uh, Zinky asks, where do you live? I think you were talking about prices, right? Where do I live? That's a little uh, little stalkerish. I'm in Canada, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, prices in Canada are ridiculous. Like this is, let's say this is a $1,200 laptop in the US. It's like probably 1,800 Canadian is my guess. San asks, do you think the price will be reduced for current gaming laptops due to the introduction of the RTXs? Eventually, eventually. When the new SKUs come out, okay, so here's the thing. You're not gonna see too many RTX laptops before the end of the year. You might see a couple like high-end ones probably come out around November, December, but the, the massive push for RTX based laptops will start being presented in, at CES in January of 2019, and then you'll start seeing them come on the market after spring. So there's usually a couple of pushes. You have the spring push, 
and then you have the October or September push, and then you have a few concepts that come out at the end of the year. Keith Cav uh, was asking, how's the webcam? Potato, potato quality, 720p. It's a nose cam, actually. We tested it before, so yeah, it's not the stream great. is done. Just go back and check it. Uh, Jotis asks, so after your review, will you be handing this back to Lenovo? Yes, that's correct. That's how it generally works. I'm just trying to find some, go back to my question list. Yeah, most laptops, or I'd say 99% of the laptops that I review have to be sent back. Mark asks, did you go over the weight and the thickness? The weight is, I think, I think someone posted in the comments, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I'm guessing around five and a half to six pounds. Okay, I'm gonna load up a quick ADA64 test. I should probably plug it in. Oh, I missed the name, but someone had a really specific uh, question. This, oh, Woohoo96 can, said, can you please test this with The Witcher 3 for your review, I guess? That yeah, I can, do, I, can, I can do Witcher 3 on my review. That's not a problem. I'm not gonna do it on the stream this weekend because this stream I'm literally just playing Blackout. But I will play Blackout on this laptop you for you guys. You mean Black Ops, right? I think it's called Blackout. Blackout COD 4, isn't it? I think you're thinking of something else. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I think I'm pretty sure it's Blackout COD 4. Okay. Yeah, keep going with that. Okay. Ada 64 Extreme being installed right now. Uh, this was an interesting. And Andreas asks, what's the worst budget gaming laptop? Oh, man. The worst budget gaming laptop that I reviewed this year. Yo, TomTech changed his name, by the way. Yes, TomTech. I love it. And he, look at the first question he asks me. How's my wife? Now, if that's not TomTech the Savage, then I don't know what is. You forgot that question you were about to answer. Yes, so the worst budget gaming laptop I've reviewed this year. Um, oh, it doesn't have to be this year. I mean, I guess it should be this year. Well, the year. worst laptop that I've reviewed this year is, funny enough, it's an Alienware 15. Like, I couldn't even use it. It was just so bad in terms of overheating. The second worst laptop that I reviewed this year, I don't know. I, I like the G7, but I'm not in love with it. I mean, I wouldn't say it's the worst. I just say it's okay. I like the design. I love the Thunderbolt 3. I just don't like the crappy display. I don't know. I, I'd probably say it's... The MSI GF63 feels kind of cheap. That would be another one example. Okay, I'm going to load up HW Info, and then we're going to do a heat test quick heat test and see what it does. Again, this is not reminiscent of my normal heat tests, but it'll give you a quick idea of how this bad boy runs. Uh, on the flip side, Coven asks, in your opinion, what brand has the best laptops overall? Overall? Um, whew, that's a tough one because every year they like each brand changes them up. So in terms of build quality, I, I don't use a MacBook, but I still think MacBooks have still the best build quality. Um, Dell is pretty close in terms of build quality, but they're kind of behind now in the thermals. I'd say overall, probably Dell for Windows laptops. I have to say Dell. Okay, Nelson asks a good question. So Lenovo Y730 or an Ultrabook with an eGPU setup? A Lenovo Book Y730 or an Ultrabook with an eGPU setup? If you're a hardcore gamer, Definitely the Lenovo Y730. If you're someone who just goes to school, takes some notes, comes home and plays some games, then I just get the eGPU because then you have like the best of both worlds. Something you should definitely do before you go today. Uh, Amar asks, how is the RGB? You should see if there are any options. What options yeah, there are. is options. We'll go through that right after this, um, this heat test. Okay, so I got HW Info loaded up. We're going to load up the actual stability test. Here we go, system stability test. We're gonna do start. Let's see what happens here. So right now we, make sure this is on best best performance. So while you let that run for a few minutes, uh, our Shattered Legacies asks, would you review the Zephyrus S whenever it comes be becomes available? Although if I remember your opinion of the touch bar, Whoa. it is sour. We're really throttling. Okay, um, yeah, so the Zephyrus S, that's the one with the mouse pad on the right hand side. So that already turns me off because I'm a lefty. I think it's the stupidest idea. I understand why they're doing it because it helps them put better thermals or better cooling in their laptops. But um, yeah, I'm gonna review it anyways. I'll keep, I'll pretend I'm a right-handed person, but but yeah. Okay, so we got a little bit of thermal throttling for a second, but now it's fine. It was just a quick little 1%, 2% thermal throttle drop. 
Uh, Red Skull says he only spent 1700 last night. That's it? Oh, Red, Alex. Well, it means you only bought one phone. You only sold one kidney last night is what you're saying. I sold both of them. So far, thermals are good. We're at about 71 degrees Celsius. We're boosting to 3.3 gigahertz. So, so far, I'm impressed. The only time it boosted to 96 degrees Celsius was when I first started the test. And that's typically normal because it's a quick spike to heat and the laptop has to catch up. But right now, we're at 73 to 78 degrees. We're at 3.3 gigahertz. So far, I like it. I like what I'm seeing. So let's just let this run for a little bit. Actually, you know what? This is what the fans sound like when they're on about 75% load. So I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer so you guys can hear. Okay, and now I'm gonna get the decibel meter so you guys can hear as well. Or see. So the decibel meter reads around 53 decibels, which is, it's loud, it's noticeable, but it's not like overbearing. Again, we have other stuff in this room, so I'd say it's probably around 50 decibels right now. But so far, the thermals are excellent. I have no complaints so far based on what I'm seeing. Um, again, a more realistic test will be about two hours of gaming straight to give you guys more of a realistic approach in terms of how this performs in terms of thermals. I don't like doing just benchmarks because benchmarks... They're not consistent. I mean, they're consistent, but they don't pound the CPU in, in different ways like actually gaming or running rendering tests or doing stuff like that. But so far, I like what I'm seeing. All right, let's 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 get some more questions before we wrap this up. Tempera Doyle says, are 1050 Ti laptops worth it? Sufficient gaming performance? There's sufficient gaming performance if you don't mind gaming at 1080p on medium settings. Sometimes you can get, get, get away with high settings with games like Overwatch and Fortnite, but most of the time you need to be gaming on medium. So we have a lot of questions about RTX laptops. Okay, let's hit, hit me up with them. Oh, just everyone's still asking, is it, is it worth it to wait? Are they gonna be better? How much better are they gonna be? So, I don't think it's worth it to wait. If there's something you've been having your eye on, you really desperately need a gaming laptop, just buy one. Um, the RTX, you will see a performance increase, but I don't think it's gonna be huge like it was from Maxwell, which was the 9 series, to Pascal, the 10 series. <coughs> you dying? Oh, I'm dying. So yeah, I wouldn't wait. The only time you notice a big difference is when games start optimizing or being utilized with ray tracing, and that won't be for another year or so. So I would just go ahead and buy a laptop now if you need one. Uh, Andrew asks, what's the difference between a G5 and a G7? The G5 or a G7? Assuming uh, he's talking about laptops. Yeah, G, there's G3, G5, G7. I haven't reviewed the G5, so I don't know exactly the specs for that. I can give you the differences between G3 and G7, but... Um, that whole pocket of G-Series gaming is like Dell's mid-range of laptops. Like, the G3 would be the budget of the mid-range, and then the G7 would be, like, the premium of that mid-range. And then the G5 would fall somewhere in the middle. So a few questions. Uh, Vikas asks, any idea about the Lenovo Legion Y7000? When is it going to launch, and is it worth to wait for? Lenovo Legion Y7000? I've never heard of that. Is that a, is that a Quadro-based computer? I'll look it up right now. Okay, so we have a couple other questions. Um, you already mentioned something about the Yuzu Strix Scar, right? Yeah, I haven't reviewed it yet, but I do want to review it. What about the MSI Leopard? Is that a thing? Yeah, the GF or GR60 something. I haven't reviewed it yet. I don't plan on reviewing it right now, but I am reviewing an upcoming MSI laptop, so stay tuned for that. There is a 7000 series laptop. The internet's going really slow right now. Okay, hold on. Uh, oh, cool. I see. Yo, Jolta says it's five in the morning where he's watching from. So that's crazy. Damn. Uh, well, then I he asks, you being here. are AMD laptops worth it? So the problem with AMD laptops is um, they're great because they have a lot of cores. So you can do like great streaming and stuff. But they do get quite hot. So it depends on the AMD laptop. I ha honestly, I haven't tested many of them this year. But uh, the word on the street is that they do get quite hot. Uh, Roby says, make Book X Pro now or wait for the new ZenBook? Oh, man. The new ZenBook has the 1050. I'd wait for the new ZenBook. I, I, I'm really curious to see how that ZenBook 5, ZenBook, just the regular ZenBook, the 1050i Max-Q performs. Sure, I asks, can you show him the keys on the left side? So the keys on the left side of this laptop are your function keys. 
So you have this one brings up your keyboard where you can basically um, edit which either whatever what you want your Mac magic keys to do. This one does a screen record and then you have M1, M2 which are your basic um, function keys and this one is for your backlighting on the keyboard. I don't know if you can see that. Turn it off, turn it back on. San asks uh, to both of us, what laptops and mobiles do you primarily use? So I don't use, so like I was saying before, I don't use MacBooks. Again, not because I hate them, just because. No, you because. just said what laptops and what phones. Oh, okay. So right now I'm using the Galaxy Note 9. So that's primarily what I'm using right now, but I am gonna switch to the iPhone once it comes out to review it. So I'll probably use that for a while. In terms of laptops, um, I was basically using a Surface Book 2 for a very long time to edit and do my work on when I wasn't in my studio. Um, but I'm probably gonna be switching to either a XPS 15 or a Razer Blade 15, depending on performance. Um, me, I'm still using uh, this Pixel 2. I love it. Lima, can I show him something? Ash like, like loves to take care of his stuff. He has like a nice, uh, uh, can't, it's a little bit blown out, but he has this beautiful, there it is, lovely little crack. Whenever he gets mad at me, he throws his phone at me, and this is what the side of my head looks like right now. Yeah, this phone. there you go. <laughs> so, in case everyone wondered why. Uh, I saw you use the x 15 from two years ago. Would it be one year ago? Maybe. No, it's two years. What? You have the... The 9550? Yeah, yours is one year ago, isn't it? There you go, one year. Mine's the 9550, the old one I had. Uh, Yossi says, can you test the sound during a stress test? So you did the decibel meter, right? Yeah, so I did the decibel meter around 50, 50 decibels. On stress. On stress. Fans are noticeable, but they're not overbearing. CPU temps, guys, it's been a steady 3.3 gigahertz this entire time. <clears throat> CPU temps are averaging around 71 to 74 degrees. Very impressed, but again, this doesn't speak for gaming. This Sunday, 9 p.m. on Twitch, join me, and I'll give you guys a more accurate representation of how heat performs on this laptop. Okay, I'm gonna end the stress test now. <coughs> I'm dying here. It's been a long day. All right, any more questions? Oh, people are talking about who their favorite YouTubers are. Um, <laughs> Obviously, it's, it's me, <laughs> come apparently, on. Apparently, uh, Linus is live too right now, which is why you have like three viewers. That's it, all I have is three viewers. <laughs> I oh. don't know, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um. My favorite YouTubers? I don't have any. I hate everybody equally. No, I'm joking. I have favorite YouTubers. I just try, I don't watch too much tech anymore just because like you do it so much yourself that you get like overwhelmed with it that you just need a break from it afterwards. So sometimes I'll watch like other channels. Uh, some questions for me. That's cool. All uh, right. Keith asks, where can he find my films? Uh, Vimeo.com forward slash trembling water. Oh, tell them about your new film. Let's plug. Be a shape. Be sh be ruthless, Ash. Be shameless. So, okay. Okay. So, Ash just submitted. Can I tell them? Sure, yeah. Okay. So, Ash just submitted this amazing film to this Aperture contest. It's a lighting company. Not like the lights in your house, but a lighting for like film studios. And it's probably one of his best jobs he's ever done. Uh, so, I was the DP, by the way. I didn't, <coughs> I didn't fully. It's not my entire project. Just, just, just own it, man. So, anyways, it was really good. Um... It's, it'll keep you on your seat the entire time. It's it's like 10 minutes long, but it's like, I'm not going to give it away. Um, if It'll you be out soon, like I'd say in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I follow if you want to follow Ash to find out when it comes out, his Twitter handle is at Trembling Water, or maybe uh, I'll... Instagram's better. Or Instagram, which is also at Trembling Water. <coughs> Sorry, and I'll post a link in the description after this uh, live stream is over. Check it, it's good. Uh, Neil says, when are the ninth gen Intel chips coming? This fall, I believe. I mean, they have to announce it still, but I think they're announcing it before the end of the year. Okay, cool. Thank you, Tom Tech, for, for blasting that out. Discord server is .gg slash Matt Monas. Again, this is a place where we all chat about tech. I answer your questions. I have awesome people like Tom in there. Hal9000, you guys know who you are. Zmad making JPEG jokes, who will answer all of your questions if I'm not there. You Twitch, should, uh, do... either too. The RGB options. Oh, RGB options. Okay, we'll do the RGB options and we're going to wrap this up because it's getting late and you guys don't want to spend your evening with me. Like, who wants to do that? I don't. <laughs> Thanks, Ash. And I'm also dying here. Okay, Lenovo Vantage. Bye-bye, Matt. See you later, Martin. Thanks for joining, buddy. Wait, don't, don't leave yet. We're not done. We're not done. Calm down, people. we got a few more minutes left. No, we're done. 
Okay, except we've all gone to Linus's stream. They've all been, yeah, they ditched me for Linus. Okay, so we have, okay, so basically right now we're in the little advantage section. So this is the place where you can go ahead and enable cooling boost. So cooling boost will basically just ramp up the fans as loud as they can go. That's that's pretty much it. Um, secondly, um, the RAM is actually by Samsung. Oh, and interesting. Okay, so input control. Where is the actual lights? Zmad says, where can I find your barber, Matthew Manus? You'll never find my barber. You don't want my barber, trust me. Okay, after this haircut she gave me, it's the last thing you want right now. <laughs> You're looking like uh, Carl Conrad's older brother. Oh God, please, let's not let's not go there. Um, where is it? Lenovo Utility, maybe. It has to be one of these. So in the meantime, once you figure that out, Maxim says he works as a graphic artist love to make illustrations but he would like to play so what pc would be best for that for gaming uh, and doing our art uh our yeah uh, surface book too if you if you're doing artists like you can still game on it and it's perfect for for sketching and drawing I, the 1060 inside of there is more than powerful enough uh asan asks the oneplus 6t won't have a headphone jack what is your view about that I'm glad you asked because I'm going to give you my opinion this Sunday on the OnePlus 6T. So if you want to see that, you're going to miss a hot, a spicy one. So Sunday, tune in for that video. But yeah, I have a feeling something different is going to be happening with the OnePlus line. Yeah, this video is going to look pretty good because <coughs> um, I shot it. So there'll such be that a, too. Such a narcissist. You okay. told me to be ruthless. I know, I'm kidding. Um, um, Mike um, is feeling left out in this hair game. So maybe he should send us a picture of him and his, his haircut so we could put it in the Hall of Fame of hair cuts. <laughs> Do it. Send it, Mike. I want to see your hair. Um, I don't know. I have no idea where the RGB is. I'm sure it's here somewhere. I'm just being like blind right now. Um, how to change the RGB on this. Can mm -hmm. someone school Matthew once again? Let's try the Nova Utility. Because it's not under... Okay, this is McAfee. Obviously, it's not there. Let's check I mean, Tagbush seems to think that it should be under Corsair. Oh, here it is. No, it should be here. This should be it. Why can't I change this, though? Macro edit. Nope. Nope. Why are your lights off to begin with? Do you have to turn them on? It's just backlighting is off. It's on now. Okay, I'm gonna find, I don't want to waste you guys too much time. I'll, I'll, I'll obviously provide this in the full review. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's staring me, right, me right in the... Right in my face. This is terrible. But I don't see it right now. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure, pretty confident you can go ahead and basically customize the keyboard to whatever colors you want. So that's pretty much it. Just two more minutes of questions. I'm going to wrap this up. Guys, I just want to thank you so much for being on this stream. You guys are amazing. I appreciate it. This Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Join me on Twitch. I will be playing Blackout COD 4. To, um, Everyone's saying use the Corsair app. The Corsair app? Yeah, they handle the RGB on this. Really? Being schooled once again, my friend. <sighs> Jesus. Okay, I'm turning it back on. This is like the this is like the, the one more thing episode. Where's the course here? Oh, here it is. Look at you guys knowing everything. I think you guys should be here ha! instead. Here it is. Instant lighting. Boom. All red. Look at that. Boom. Can you tilt the screen down a touch? Here we go. You can do it all blue. Look, the keyboard's all blue right now, and you can go ahead and actually customize Thank the you, entire Tag thing. Thank you, Tech Bush. You finally listened to you. Look at that spiral rainbow. So basically, you can make your own profiles. You can set the keyboard to whatever colors you want. If you want to, uh, I don't know, have two spiral rainbows, you can do that too. Our Shattered Legacies, please uh, feel free to push all the dad jokes. Matt loves them. <laughs> Shattered is the man. He's, he's actually from your country, Ash, from the UK. But he lives in Canada, just like you. Oh, sweet. I'm not going to give any more details to protect his privacy, but that's the story. So anyways, yeah, you can change the zones, you can change the lighting, you can make profiles using the Corsair software program that I failed to find. But thank you guys for noticing it for me. All right, any more questions before we wrap this up? Uh, we had, uh, is Thanksgiving <coughs> sales best time to buy a laptop? Black Friday in the States? Um, yeah, you can probably find some pretty sweet deals. I know Acer loves doing deals around that time, so you can check them out. Actually, I'm going to give credit to Acer. This year, they've um, done a good job of improving their products. So keep an eye on those guys. 
8 or 16 gigs of RAM? 16 gig of ra- gigabytes of RAM in this model. Do but, you know uh, Peter McKinnon? I do not know him personally, but he lives in the same city as I do. This is a 144 hertz panel. 60 hertz, but you can buy this with 144 hertz if you, you really should, want to. You should do a drinking game. Every time someone asks the same question, oh, everyone I, has to I would be, I, if, if we did that game, I would literally be drunk all day because I get the same questions over and over again. Uh, H asks, could you please measure the thickness open and closed? I don't have a measuring tape here, but um, if you hop on my Discord server, maybe on Monday or Tuesday, I can do that for you. Just, just message me and remind me, and I'll do it then. People want a meetup. Patel Millen asks, where do you live in Canada? Would love to meet you. Um, I live in Toronto, Ontario. A meetup is something I've always wanted to do, but I'm just kind of nervous of how many people would actually show up. And I'm in Toronto. Like, There's only so many of us. Actually, quite a bit of Canadians on on my channel. I think I think it'd be good if we did a meetup with like a bunch of other YouTubers as well so we could like pull our numbers together to make it appropriate. I'll make sure I'm busy that day. Of course you will. Thanks, Ash. Okay, cool. That's We're done. It. Done? Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. So again, thank you so much for being on the stream. Have a great weekend. Make sure to follow me on Discord if you have any questions about this laptop or any laptops in general. Discord.gg slash Matt Mona's. Links in the description down below. 9 p.m. this Sunday. We got a Twitch stream going on. Blackout, COD 4. We're playing world open beta for like PUBG style. Um, yeah. Yo, we have a final dad joke to end the stream. Reminds me of my laser. So our shattered legacy says, remind me of my laser teacher who said he'd take a shot every time someone asks him a silly question in class. One of my friends suggested giving him alcohol poisoning on purpose. <laughs> dad jokes, 2018. All right, that's it, guys. Cool. Have Thanks, a great everyone. night. Thank you for joining.